We are now taking you back to the Royal Opera House, Covent Garden, for Act Two of The Bohemian Girl. Gypsies are encamped one night on the outskirts of the city of Presley. The city guards are on patrol, but in spite of them, Devil's Hoof and some of the men are hanging about an inn where young Thorstein, the nephew, and now the heir of Count Arnheim, is carousing with some friends. When he comes out, the worst the liquor, the gang rob him of all his jewels. But they have been seen by the gypsy queen, who infuriated that the whole gypsy race should be branded as thieves because a few are worthless, forces them to return what they have taken to the frightened young nobleman. This they do, except for a locket and chain which devils who stole before he slipped away at the queen's arrival. She promises Florestine he shall have that too, and the gypsies have caught him safely back to the city. And now Arlene comes out of her tent to tell the faithful Tadea, always on guard at her side, of a strange dream she has had of a life among riches and splendor. She learns from him that he could tell her the truth lying behind her dream, that finding that if he did so it would mean they would have to part. Arlene wants to know no more, content that they love each other. Now the queen returns and summons the whole tribe to hear how Tadeus has broken two of the ancient gypsy laws. The first, that when two gypsies fall in love, they should first inform the queen, and the second, that no gypsy can be married to any except another gypsy, and Tadeus, of course, is not a true gypsy. The tribe threaten him with death or banishment. Tadeus turns the tables on them by threatening not only to tell Arlene who she is, but also to denounce them to justice for having kidnapped her. In the face of this threat, and moved by Arlene's plea, the tribe forces the queen to marry them over the fire. As the first signs of dawn appear, the gypsies dress themselves up in all their finery in preparation for the fair of Pressburg in the morning. But the queen keeps devil tooth back. In a short scene inside her tent, she accuses him of smirching the name of the tribe and demands from him the locket and chain he stole from Forrester. In fear of her, he is angrily forced to give them up and she, no less angrily, dismisses him. And now the fair at Pressburg is in full swing. A tightrope dancer, a quack doctor, stilt walkers, dancers and entertainers of all kinds, and the gypsy tribe with their songs and dances. Passing through the crowd is Count Arnheim, now the governor of Pressburg, an old man weighed down by his grief. Some memory seems to strike him as he drops a coin into the hat the gypsy girl holds out to him, but it's gone. Florestein, however, is attracted by her and insists on a kiss and is greatly insulted when he gets his face slapped instead. The gypsy queen, in pretending friendship and admiration for Arlene's spirit, makes her a present of the locket and chain. Florestein recognizes it and at once accuses Arlene of having stolen it. In spite of the threats of the gypsies, the appeals of Thaddeus and Arlene and the alarm of the visitors to the fair, the city guard push their way through and carry her to the Hall of Justice. This is the sum of the last scene of the act. Shortly before Arlene's arrest, Count Arnheim enters, lost in his thoughts of how grief over the past can only find comfort not in hope but in memory. His dreams are broken by the noise of the crowd following the guards who drag Arlene before the Count for summary justice. She denies that she is a thief, but in fear refuses to say who gave her Florestine's locket and chain, and in view of her obstinate silence, Court against the Count against his will, tells her he will have no option but to find her guilty as an accomplice. At this, Arlene, to whom honor is everything, draws her dagger to kill herself, but it is taken from her, and the Count, gently chiding her for thinking that the future can only be dark, suddenly sees the mark of an old wound on her arm. He asks her how she got it, and she tells him that twelve years ago she was wounded by a stag in the forest. And as she tells the story, she dimly recognizes the walls of the Hall of Justice, as if she had seen them before in some enchanted dream. Now Tadeus pushes his way through the crowd to come to her help. Eagerly, she appeals to him as the man who saved her life. And sadly, against his will, Tadeus tells her that she is indeed the daughter of Count Arnheim. As the crowd praises God for such a wonderful reunion, the Count clasps Arlene in his arms while she looks anxiously round for her comrade Thaddeus, who has quietly slipped away.
So I can see what you're up to without any doubt. You're not a miracle unless by you. There's loving the folk left and sharing it too. Get what we can, no need of surprise. Get what we can, no fighting for ever alone.
I adore. I cool your cup with pleasure still. I see your hope again restore. But lonely, yes, lonely, I will rest it still. Oh, can it be? To you, so slow to die. So true, so full of grace. To you, I do but rank and wealth beside you. Pride of place, ah yes and true, to you I treasure, I could tell what is but known to me, at the expense of my own pleasure, that I am hoped one day might be.
be flocking to the fair. So let all of us now go along. Yes, let us no longer delay. We'll meet in the public square and we'll entertain the crowds with gypsy dance and song. <laughs>
charming when you smile.
that is the end of the second act of Balfe's opera, The Bohemian Girl, broadcast from the Royal Opera House, Covent Garden. The introduction to the last act will follow in 15 minutes. <laughs>